Welcome back to Giant Monster Games, my name's Ted, and don't worry, I'm not here to replace Adrian, but I am here to create more content for viewers like you. So feel free to leave a comment letting me know what videos you want to see. Be sure to vote for the next video, subscribe to Giant Monster Games, and don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed. This week we're taking a look at the Boros Blink combo. Boros meaning that it's just a red and white deck. Alright, let's start by taking a look at the combo. This combo consists of two cards, specifically four copies of the Felidar Guardian and four copies of Restoration Angel. These two creatures are doing the same thing in the deck, even though technically Restoration Angel is considered to be a better card overall because she has Flash, Flying, and has a 3-4 body, as opposed to Felidar Guardian's 1-4 body. We're using both of these cards for their Enter the Battlefield ability. Their Enter the Battlefield ability says that they get to blink another creature that we control. Now blinking for reference just means that the creature gets exiled and then returns to the battlefield immediately. So we have to keep in mind though that Restoration Angel cannot blink other angels and that's a slight hiccup that I'll get to in just one second. Now that we know the pieces, let's see how the combo actually works. First we start by playing either one of those two cards that we just went over. Then we play a second one. Obviously can't be two Restoration Angels though because they can't blink each other. Then. When the second card enters the battlefield, it blinks the creature that we had out first, that creature gets exiled, returns to the battlefield, then it blinks the card that we just played. That card gets exiled and then re-enters the battlefield, and then it blinks the card that we had out first. And it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, infinitely. So we have an infinite amount of creatures entering the battlefield and leaving the battlefield. Also something to take note of, if you have both of the cards for the combo in your hand, it's always best to play the Restoration Angel second and always during your opponent's turn. Alright, now that we're done explaining the complicated part of the combo, we can move on to our creature package. We have four copies of Soul Warden and two copies of Soul's Attendant. For all intents and purposes, Soul's Attendant is the same thing as Soul Warden. Soul Warden says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life. So, when we have all those creatures entering back and forth, back and forth, back and forth through them blinking each other through the combo, we gain infinite life. The next card helps us take advantage of the infinite life gain. We're running two copies of Ajani's Pride Mate. Ajani's Pride Mate says whenever you gain life, you may put a 1-1 counter on Ajani's Pride Mate. Now keep in mind, we're gaining one life every time a creature enters the battlefield. And we don't have to stop. So, as we gain infinite life, we gain an infinitely large Ajani's Pride Mate that can help us close out the game. Next on the list, we have four copies of Kroon Striker. It says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one, plus O, oh, and gains trample until end of turn. So when we have an infinite amount of creatures entering the battlefield, it gets infinitely larger. Now keep in mind your opponent cannot chump block it because it has trample. Next up is four copies of Lightning Berserker. She can be dashed in for one red, and she has fire breathing, so she can get in some real surprise damage. Although most of the time we're not using her for her combat abilities, we're using her to activate the enter the battlefield triggers of our other cards. So every turn we're gaining more life out of the Soul Sisters package, every turn we're getting bigger creatures so that way we can swing in with a bigger Kroon Striker. Overall she just helps tie in the synergies with the deck and helps it to run a lot smoother. And last but not least in our creature package is Wall of Omens. Wall of Omens is a great defender against those aggro decks, and it replaces itself by letting us draw a card when it enters the battlefield. We can blink it later in the game to get us some more card advantage and hopefully get our combo online. Our next package is our enchantment package. And for this, we have two copies of Impact Tremors. Impact Tremors says that whenever we have a creature enter the battlefield under our control, it does one damage to each of our opponents. When Impact Tremors is on the battlefield and we're comboing off, we have an infinite amount of creatures entering the battlefield, so our opponent is taking an infinite amount of damage. Up next, the artifacts. For this, we're running four copies of Genesis Chamber. Genesis Chamber says whenever a non-token creature comes into play, its controller gets a 1-1 colorless artifact creature token. Now keep in mind, as a thing to note, our opponent will get value off of this too. However, our deck is designed to get more value out of it than our opponent. It synergizes with every part of our strategy, giving us more creatures when we're comboing off, it makes Kroon Strikers bigger, it makes us gain more life with the Soul Sisters, and it does more damage with Impact Tremors. And lastly, our instance. We're running four copies of Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt can take care of some creatures, or it can be a way we can close out the game. And for only one red mana, you can't really go wrong. On to the mana base. We're running two copies of Ghost Quarter as a main deck way to fight against Tron, and we're running four copies of Battlefield Forge as a more flexible way to get red or white mana whenever we need it. The rest of the mana base is eight mountains and eight plains for all of our red and white mana needs. All right, moving on to the sideboard. 
First up, we have two copies of Boros Charm. Boros Charm can be used to close out a game with four points of damage. It can give our permanents indestructible to save them from a wrath, and it can give one of our creatures double strike. Next up is two copies of Celestial Flare. Celestial Flare can be used to protect one of our creatures that are swinging in, or more often we can use it to destroy a creature that's attacking us. Next up is two copies of Crumble to Dust. Crumble to Dust is great against Tron and Man Lands. Next, we have two copies of Deflecting Palm. Deflecting Palm is a way to take damage that would be going in our face and put it back in our opponent's face. Then we're running two copies of Core Firewalker. Core Firewalker is good against Burn because they can't deal with him. And every time a player casts a red spell, we gain a life. Next, we're running one copy of Return to Ranks because if we're going against Heavy Removal, we need our creatures back. Then we have two copies of Tormod's Crypt. Tormod's Crypt is great against all graveyard strategies, especially Dredge. Next up, we're running two copies of Wear Tear. It's just simple spot removal for artifacts or enchantments. And that finishes the sideboard. Let's look at some upgrades. The upgrades this week are going to be a little bit different than they've been in the past because this deck doesn't have too much that it can upgrade to. And fortunately, we do have some sideboard upgrades available. First of all, you can trade in some of your Celestial Flares for some Blessed Alliances. Then, we can exchange some of our Tormod's Crypts for some Rest in Pieces. And then we can exchange some Wear Tears for some Stony Silences. As always, you can upgrade your mana base. For this, I'd like to recommend four copies of Arid Mesa and four copies of Windswept Heath. These can be used to fetch out the colors of mana we need on turn one. Next, I'd like to recommend four copies of Sacred Foundry. Sacred Foundry is something that we can get by our fetches, and it allows us to have both of our colors on demand. And that's the entire deck tech. If you enjoyed the video, consider sharing it, vote for the next video, pound the like button, and subscribe to Giant Monster Games. I'm Ted, and until next time, don't forget to game like a giant monster.